Okay, so I've got six o'clock. And therefore, I'll welcome everybody to the uh, Lenox Select Board meeting Wednesday, August 17th, and it's now six o'clock. Any announcements from the chair? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes of August 3rd. I move to approve the minutes from the August 3rd meeting of the Lenox Select Board. I, I'll abstain. I wasn't here. Oh, okay. Then I'll second it. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and we, now we have Citizens Open Forum. Anybody wants to stand up and chat with us for a minute? Or two? Okay. So we'll move on to the consent agenda. And if you... I can go give me the, for it. Sure, the consent agenda, we have a one-day alcohol license request. Paul Bonelay is seeking a one-day all-alcohol license for Saturday, August 27th from noon until 11 p.m for a wedding at Ventford Hall. A certified bartender will be present. There's also a one-day wine and malt license request. The Lennox Dale Fire Company is seeking a one-day wine and malt license for Sunday, September 4th for their annual block party. A certified bartender will also be present. No holds, so I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, general business. We have a couple of public hearings tonight. Uh, same owners, different properties, so I suspect that uh, any, any comments will refer to both properties uh, or not. So uh, if you want to open the... Sure. I will move to open the public hearing for Hampton Inn and Suites. Second. Do I, do I need to read this first? Um, before I before we make the motion, okay. Um, so, with regard to this particular hearing, uh, the town of Lenox uh, notices a public hearing for the select board. Notice is hereby given that a hearing will be held by the select board in their capacity as licensing board on an application for a transfer and pledge of license in an annual wine and malt hotel license, which has been filed with the local licensing board by HBL Concessions, LLC, doing business as Hampton Inn and Suites. Lennox Berkshire, Alyssa Towell, manager for the premises, located at 445 Pittsfield Road, Lennox, and consisting of three floors, totaling 51,387 square feet, four entrances and exits. The board will act on said application on Wednesday, August 17th, 2022 at 6 p.m. in the Selectman's Meeting Room, Town Hall Building, Lennox Mass. Dave Roach, Chairman of the Lennox Select Board. I move to open the public hearing. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Okay, so the public hearing is open, and is there anybody here to speak to that? Uh, yes. Good evening. Thank you, your name and your affiliation. Yes. Good evening. My name is Joe Devlin. I'm a partner at the firm of Upton, Cannell & Devlin with offices at 112 Water Street in Boston, Massachusetts. And I represent the applicant here uh, today, which I'm going to refer to as, uh, uh, as Waterford Hotel Group. Uh, that's actually the, the parent company. Um, as the uh, 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 ad suggests or the notice suggests, we're here for a transfer of the liquor license for this, and, and I'm going to kind of say ditto for the second property when that public hearing comes up, uh, the courtyard by Marriott. Um, the properties have been sold, the old tool lodging group sold to another property owner, and what happens in these is the new property owner has its own management or operations company, which is Waterford, or the, uh, the initials uh, for or uh, the, the LLC that was submitted as the applicant, but it's owned by Waterford. Um, with me is, uh, so the, this is the Hampton Inn, and that is uh, Alyssa Toll. Uh, and Alyssa, meet the same company, the new company, because it kind of looks like the old company. Uh, Alyssa has been the GM at this location since 2018. Um, I don't know if she's the manager of record on the license currently, but she is the manager of record uh, for, the, for the applicant. Um, in these types of things, the employees rarely change and the operations rarely change. It's sort of at the executive level and the relationships that the new company has with vendors and, and uh, business groups that bring in business. So you won't, other than the people who are watching here or here right now, you're not gonna really see any differences there. Um, 
Waterford Hotel owns a number of uh, and operates a number of locations in New England. Uh, they've they've been on the licenses in Massachusetts before and currently are on license and they're experienced in the uh, safe service of alcohol and uh, uh, and other in the operation of hotels in Massachusetts. Uh, I've probably spoken more than you wanted me to, but uh, we're here to answer any questions. <laughs> well, to the jury. Speak as loud as you want. Welcome to the panel. Sure. Any any questions? No yeah. questions. Okay. Seems pretty straightforward. Every select board's favorite topic: liquor licensing. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I will move to close the public hearing. Second. Um, Favor. Aye. 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 Sorry. Now I will move to approve the transfer of license and pledge of collateral application for HBL Concessions LLC doing business as Hampton Inn and Suites dated July 25th, 2022. Is there anybody out there that has anything else to add to this applicant? Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. No, you stay right there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So I will read the next public notice. Town of Lenox, notice of public hearing for the select board. Notice is hereby given <laughs> that a hearing will be held by the select board in their capacity as licensing board on an application for a transfer and pledge of license in an annual all alcohol hotel license, which has been filed with the local licensing board by CLB Concessions, LLC, doing business as Courtyard by Marriott, Lenox. Maria Smith, manager for premises located at 70 Pittsfield Road, Lenox, and consisting of 55,715 square feet, four story building with 92 guest rooms and a 500 square foot patio deck outdoor area, five entrances and nine exits. The board will act on said application on Wednesday, August 17th at 6 p.m. in the Selectman's Meeting Room, Town Hall Building, Lenox, Mass. Dave Roach, Chairman, Lenox Select Board. Um, I move to open the public hearing. Second. Favor? Aye. 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 Uh, thank you again. Uh, Attorney Joe Devlin from the firm of Upton, Cannell & Devlin, representing the applicant here for a transfer and a pledge, this time at the Courtyard by Marriott. Same company, same spiel, uh, basically. Um, the only thing I would point out is uh, Maria Smith is the general manager here. Uh, interestingly enough, she's been here since uh, 2018, and prior to that, she was the general manager at the Hampton Inn. She helped open it. So, uh, Also, uh, Dennis Egan, who represents the uh, O'Toole uh, Lodging Group, is also here, just in case anybody had any questions of the departing um, company or wanted to say you know, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? No questions. No questions. Great job, Dennis. Thank <laughs> you for your assistance. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I guess we'll close. I would move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now I will move to approve the transfer of license and pledge of collateral application for uh, let's get two different things. Uh, HBL concessions or CBL concessions. LLC doing business as Courtyard by Marriott Lennox, dated July 25th, 2022. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your time. Thank you. You okay. too. Yeah, you too. Thanks for driving out from Boston. <laughs> okay, the next item is uh, discussion and possible action on a DPW contract. Chris, would you lead us off on that? Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to. You know, we do have a, a, a tentative agreement um, with, uh, with the Teamsters Local 404. However, they have not been able to meet this week to ratify. Uh, the agreement so I don't have a ratified agreement to bring before the board we're hoping to have that done by the next meeting okay. but we do we do have an agreement it's committed to writing it just hasn't been ratified by the membership yet so as soon as that happens we'll be in a position to approve it if you're so inclined so I noticed Kimberly <laughs> you came Where's you Olga? You you came in a little late for the for the open mic, but I'll grant you the uh, the privilege of <laughs> taking. Yeah, sure, okay. If I'm you want, if you want to do that. Okay. 
Are you Chris? Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Kimberly. This is my leisure that I wear to work uh, at my house. So, so we, we generally give people a few minutes on the on the open mic. That's what you do? Yep. Okay. I'm, so um, name and address. Um, 41 Tucker Street in Lenox. Um, a resident of the town since uh, 2013. Um, just wanted to uh, really just present the letter that um, I writ wrote and then also the comments that other you know, neighbors had. I'm going to shut this. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. They're probably cracking a bottle of champagne. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> big, big events. Um, yeah, so I, uh, you know, really like living here. We um, split our time until uh, about a year ago, and then we decided to make our residence permanent, um, invested a lot of money into our property, um, and a lot of time, a lot of sweat equity actually went into uh, the work that we did. Um, and over the last eight years or so, um, I'm a frequent pedestrian. I love no car, you know, pedestrian lifestyle. Walk our dog downtown all the time. Um, one of the things that first attracted us to Lenox was all the natural beauty and this just adorable downtown and you know all the little bustling restaurants and things like that. Um, very proud of all the work that everybody does. I don't want to take that for granted. Um, but I have noticed uh, you know, just a decline in the um, quality of the downtown between the, the landscape maintenance um, and the amount of effort uh, property owners are putting into kind of proactively getting guidance on the things they're doing to their properties or not doing. Um, I did write this letter um, just basically outlining that I feel very strongly now sitting on a few different boards in town um, that it, do it doesn't appear that we necessarily really actively follow our master plan and, and kind of consider that in our decision making. I say that from the experience of now sitting two years on a few of the boards. And I think also I, I think we need a little bit better, stronger oversight um, into how our bylaws are actually being enacted, especially on the Historic District Commission. Um, one thing I noticed is that the, um, the lead for the Historic District Commission, for instance, is, is supposed to hold that position for three years per the bylaws. I think they've been sitting there for maybe five or six. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I know it's more than three from others that have served. Um, and I also noticed that you know, there, is, there is a conflict of interest even with that person's position because they are a property owner downtown, uh, commercial property owner. And the Historic District Commission, the bylaws give us a lot of leeway to kind of enforce standards on properties. And I could point to almost every single property downtown that's actually doing extensive renovation work. The Summer White House is a good example. They've never even talked to the Historic District Commission to even like, they replaced their windows, didn't go before the Historic District Commission to find out if those were the appropriate replacement for a very historic property. Um, the Walker House was supposed to actually install shutters to keep it historic and actually shield the nasty mechanical equipment outside, and they didn't. And all these things in sort of like the broken windows, you know, all these small things are adding up to a downtown that looks significantly not as nice, even as like Lee. Lee looks great. You, walk, you drive downtown, they've got the flowers. Apparently they have a little guy with a wagon that waters <coughs> them. All the buildings are in ship shape. They, have, they must have been doing some kind of outreach. You go downtown on Lenox, and especially on Church Street, there's weeds growing up around the um, light post. There's weeds in people's property. There's rotted sills on commercial doors. There's stuff hanging out everywhere. There's a guy that has clear shower curtains covering a balcony. I'm not trying to call him out. I'm just pointing out this culmination of stuff. And everybody just seems to be doing whatever the heck they want to do. Somebody paints a building, we never got an application for that. Somebody tears down something, we never got an application for that. So they didn't even ask permission. Um, so I just, I think, you know, it's time that someone says, hey, listen, the more this stuff deteriorates, the more we, we have lost revenue or risk of lost revenue, because the whole point of the downtown is it's a tourist hotspot. And people like myself come here for a, a higher standard of, you know, beautiful buildings, beautiful scenery, they are willing to pay top dollar for that. So I want to think with that in mind. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically, you know, call to action. <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> no, I, I certainly appreciate it. I, I don't have benefit of having a letter, so maybe you could leave uh, some I copies with here, us. But I, did, I didn't include the um, additional support letters. I had 12 neighbors um, in support, and I have my another neighbor, Jean and uh, Keith Belton, who are still working on their letter, but they did help, help edit it. Okay, well, let me, oh, let me read this. Can I add one more thing to it? Oh, sure. 
So this was actually precipitated by a very specific event. Um, love the treescape, and I've seen pictures. I, I go through the library, look at the pictures of downtown, and Tucker's, right? And I get it. We've had terrible diseases and insects that we got to combat. But little by little, I see trees getting taken down, and then no trees getting replaced. And even worse, they're just stumps, so it's like murder, and I can't even get into it. But um, on Tucker Street, I just am walking down the street and I just hear all this commotion, just, you know, huge, huge tower crane. We don't even use those in Lenox. Like, what would you even need it for? And I'm like, what's going on? Police officer watching. He's like, oh, clearing all these trees. And I said, what? And we're talking like red maples. I get it. There were a couple Norwegian maples, but white pines, 35 trees on somebody's property and just cut down. Uh, with like no, nobody saying a thing and it's commercial property. And so I, you know, I'm friendly with my neighbors and I walk over to a couple people and I said, do you know what's, people were in arms. They were like, yeah, what is happening here? This is, com this is outrageous. And that's where all the people weighed in with support. I actually had 16 neighbors that were specifically adamant <coughs> about the tree cutting and saying, how could this be allowed in the commercial district on this property? And I said, well, so one person bought all the properties and they decided to cut all the trees down because they've got a plan that has not been approved or submitted to anybody, but they took it upon themselves to make way. And I, I see a real problem with that because I see that as like literally somebody saying, whatever your rules are, well, I'm going to go ahead and start the process here. And now if you try and stop me, I'm already on my way. And I know this because I just sat on the zoning board decision about a solar field that's going to go in on Willow Creek yeah, Road. And yes, I know you do. And you, I, I was in the paper and everything else because it's the principle. It's not this solar field. I'm a big fan of solar. I have a big problem with the ground mount installation that literally cut down acres of trees for solar. And the point of solar is so we aren't dependent on natural resources that are non-renewable like trees. Great. Like what is happening? And so I sat down and, and had, was part of that. And I said, no more. Look, it just keeps happening over and over again. People are doing what they want to do. Right. Where is, where's the bylaw? Where's enforcement of anything? You know, so that's what, that's all I have to say. Okay, let us uh, digest this. Maybe we can get together. I think we were trying to get together maybe next Wednesday. I'd love to take yeah. a walk, you know, and just literally quietly. Yeah. Take a look at some of these examples. I, I have. So, I mean, you, you're, you're talking to a sympathetic ear. I just have, you know, uh, what I've just got to figure out, or we have to figure out what the rights of a property owner are as opposed to what our desires are. Yeah. So, we, we'll, let's discuss that and see if there's some remedy. The first part of your conversation, yeah, I mean, com if it's a historic district, let it be a historic district. Right. Let's make sure it's done right. Yeah. yeah, I did have a conversation Please. with um, Kimberly and Olga Weiss. Um, we met over Zoom and had a conversation about the trees and about what these what a personal property owner mm -hmm. is doing with the trees and the fact that the town doesn't have um, a tree bylaw for the commercial district um, and trying to come to um, a conversation about how we would proceed um, from this point on. So um, we, we we are looking at it. We, we do hope to meet next week uh, and start to put our heads together on this one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the same thing happened right across the street on, was it, on Tucker Street, you know, just a year or two ago where they took down a bunch of trees. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I'm sympathetic. Yeah. I, I just... Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a solution. Let's, it, there, there won't be one unless we sit down and discuss it and see what we can come up with. Yeah, I think there's, there's got to be. I think we got to push it harder, you know. And uh, the other thing I will say is that I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a, ever a fan of people talking about solutions without being coming a part of the solution. Right. So it's like there's no point in just complaining about something. You have to get active. And Chris knows. I picked up trash myself a couple of years ago on uh, Yokanav and. Uh, under mountain because yep. it was just so I'm a passionate person infuriating the amount of you know soda cans and everything else and I found out you know there's a guy that used to do it and he died and so I do think there's probably a situation where we 
have a lack of resources and it's kind of coming to a head, you know, COVID. I get it. That could be part of the problem. So okay. let's not let it go further. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. Thanks, Kimberly. Uh, yeah. Can I make a comment? Yeah. I, I'm, the, no, she's like, I'm the tree warden, and public trees are in our jurisdiction. But it, it varies from street to street. And private trees are totally in the hands of the private landowner. And that, and that varies depending on the setback in each case. So we could look at it on a property by property basis and probably come up with some, let's do this rather than that kind of situation. But a lot of it's public persuasion. It's what you can do versus what, what you should do versus what you can't do. And uh, it'll vary a great deal. But your comments are worth hearing, certainly, and uh, <coughs> looking into further. Well, and that's really great to know that there are setback rules yes, and, and things of, of that nature. So um, I, and, uh, I knew that you were the person to turn to, being the tree warden. So these will be good conversations moving forward. I mean, I liked your comment about trees being part of the historical Absolutely. aspect of, of, of of properties. Uh, well, anyway, it's a discussion for another time, and we, we, we will have it. Yep. Thanks, Warren. Okay. Madam, you want to uh -huh. move into a, that should conclude our, our, our agenda items. Okay. Now we want to. Are we moving into an executive session for the police? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I move that the board convene an executive session to discuss strategy with respect to negotiating an interest in real property and collective bargaining with the Massachusetts Coalition of Police. Uh, One second. All in favor? Oh, we got to do that with a roll call. Roll call. Mary Beth Mitz, aye. Dave Roach, aye. Warren Archie, aye. And you need to indicate that we're not returning to open session. And our next regular meeting is scheduled for September 7th at 6 p.m. Thank you.